everyone, welcome to my London broil video. Today we're gonna to be using some choice flank steak and our experiment is gonna be, um, I'm going to actually uh, marinate it first with all these ingredients, so it's olive oil, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, garlic powder, Italian seasoning, some acid for tenderizing, some salt, baking soda, onion powder, black pepper, and um, I'm going to actually take a fork and I'm going to poke holes into the beef so that it marinates. And I'm gonna marinate this at room temperature for about an hour just because I'm on a time crunch, but you want it room temp if you want it to marinate really fast. But if you did it overnight, you can just pop it in the fridge. And we're gonna, our experiment today, we're gonna to be searing half of the marinated meat, but you have to pat dry the meat after we marinate it. And I'm gonna sear it, um, one half of it, and then I'm going to broil both of the steaks so that we can see if searing it actually affects the flavor overall of the marinade. So while we have that marinating here, are some brining facts. So when um, you brine something, the water flows from the area with the highest concentration to the lowest, which is just basic chemistry. And then so during brining, water concentration at the surface of this meat is less concentrated than the brine solution. Therefore, it flows from the brine straight to the meat and it carries the salt and flavor along with it because they're all small. And then so that's how brining, we get much more flavor when we brine. And then we use something like um, this, which is a cheaper cut of beef as a flank steak. It, even leaner meat without as much fat, we can make it more flavorful because brining just make takes it to also, the next level. Also, when we use things with a lot of sodium, like the Worcestershire sauce or the soy sauce or the balsamic vinegar, the salt disrupts the protein structures and it increases tenderness in which the greatest effect is outside of the meat where there's risk of overcooking. And while 75% of meat is water, most of it is bound, which is why it's important that we have salt. Here we are water. after... <coughs> an hour of marinating and I've cut the steak in half. So we're gonna put one half straight in the broiler and then I have, um, we're gonna put in the broiler for about 13 to 15 minutes on each side and flip as long as internal temp, uh, which I'm measuring with a heat thermometer gets to about 130 degrees Fahrenheit for medium rare, which is our preference for my group, um, will be good. And I'm going to uh, sear this one on the cast iron skillet before I put it in and then so, we have this one as a normal control, and then our um, we're gonna observe the searing um, on this one. And searing actually seals in the flavor. Sometimes they call it like that. And a lot of people sear to create flavor and decrease bacteria. And um, once we pull it from the oven, we're actually gonna let it rest on a wooden cutting board, and we're gonna use a foil tent so that it doesn't decrease too much temperature. It's because meat still cooks after you take it off the heat because the internal temperature is still cooking. And then so we're just gonna have it rest for about 10 minutes and we don't wanna touch anything because we want that meat to absorb the juices back um, and absorb it back in. And when you heat something up like this, you can also see that it, um, the effects of the Mallard reaction because during cooking, there's heat and enzymes that break down, um, wound up, within the muscle tissue. And then so by heating it up, you release amino acids, sugars, fatty acids, nucleotides, and salts. So we want to absorb them all back when we let it rest. Okay, so right before we put it on the cast iron, since it's heating up, we're gonna pat dry the meat because you don't want liquids on so that it can cook. Ooh, look at all that. Okay, we'll cut back when we are searing. We're gonna sear now. <laughs> we'll come back when it's seared on both sides and then we'll go ahead and broil the meat. So here we have the steaks. Obviously this one is seared and this one is pat dry. And we're gonna put them in the oven and broil them on each side for about 13 to 15 minutes. And I actually, don't throw it out, put it in a pot. And then based on the um, previous lectures, we actually learned how to make an emulsion sauce. So I'm going to, Reduce this, I added a little bit of wine for body, red wine, and um, I'm going to add in cold butter slowly when I reduce this to a lower temperature to go along with the steak. Right. We have the broiled meat. Oh, it's a little hot. <laughs> We're actually just gonna flip it. 
can tell that the right one is the seared one. And we're gonna put that in for about 15 more minutes. So we'll see you when it's done. Steaks after broiling, I'm going to tent them with foil and then we're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes, don't touch it. And then we're gonna thinly slice along the grain and then do a taste test on to see which one we like. So better. here we go, it's tented and they have a little hole to escape, but we're gonna leave them for 10 minutes. So the steak has been um, sliced, I sliced it against the grain. So we're gonna take a look at what it looks like inside. It's a little more well than we thought it was gonna turn out but it looks great. And um, you can see that the seared one, this one's a lot juicier. The sear was able to keep more of the juices in, so we're just gonna do a taste test. So this is the sear. Mm. It really tastes like marinade. I'm gonna cut a piece of the... Yeah, you can taste more of the marinade on this one, but the sear you can taste more of the just like cooking flavor, like it's a little more burnt that adds like more complexity. So I actually enjoyed this one better, but it's all to personal preference. Thank you so much for watching my video.